of me on I copied you. I'll I'll chat with you after. Thank you. Mr. President, Commissioners, it is now uh, 5.30. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ada County Highway District uh, pre-commission meeting. And we will begin by asking if uh, anyone on the commission has any questions about today's agenda. And we'll welcome Dave McKinney, Commissioner McKinney from all over Zoom. Any? Okay. Then we'll go directly into the report from the director. Hey, Mr. President, commissioners, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, commissioners. I do have a few items for you today, and they are a diverse uh, group of items across the board. Uh, and I will be sharing some information with you with the information package I put in front of you. Uh, Commissioner McKinney, I did send you uh, those, that package electronically uh, earlier this morning, so you could follow along first. Uh, a couple of comments on, on uh, uh, the TDS uh, uh, oh. operations. As you know, uh, uh, as we shared with you last week, Commissioner May and I met with the company's representatives at their request uh, as a follow-up to Commissioner Goldthorpe, Steve Price, Gary Inspin, Paul Daigle, and my initial discussions <laughs> with, uh, and recommendations with their CEO and associated leadership. We greatly appreciated their effort uh, to sit down with us again. Uh, the good news. Uh, is that there is forward progress uh, being made uh, with TDS and I've established a hotline and as of an hour ago, a hotline email that we'll have out to everybody. Uh, that was Commissioner uh, May's recommendation <coughs> that they do for customer concerns and their increased outreach to city leadership uh, and, uh, and the public. Uh, moreover, we did meet their key construction lead and uh, he is more involved in the daily operations, and there are more crews and site leadership um, directly involved with this. Direct, director, sorry to interrupt you. Could you just speak a little closer into the microphone? I think Commissioner McKinney is having a hard time hearing you. That's the excuse he's using? No. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, uh, yes, and I, I do apologize for that, uh, for not being that close. Anyway, as an update right now, and I just received this about a half hour ago uh, from them. So I'll be reading from uh, from their email. I will share this with you all later tonight or, or tomorrow so that you uh, can get the full gist of it. But anyway, uh, for Meridian, uh, uh, their, their contractor has completed 100% of their shallow duct remediation. Uh, they anticipate completing all hardscape uh, remediation by September 1st, uh, 2021. For Garden City, they've now completed 100%, uh, that's 40,400 feet of shallow uh, duct remediation. In other words, they're putting it where it needs to be uh, and such in several of the neighborhood areas. However, uh, they still have another three, uh, another 4,000 feet to go uh, regarding tie-in. There's a lot of more work to do. After discussions across the board, uh, uh, they've asked uh, the team to double their efforts uh, or demanded they double their efforts so that they're done by uh, uh, 21 December is their target date. Now, uh, I'll share with you what Commissioner May and I were very firm uh, with group on regarding target dates on this. So we'll be working that one for Garden City. Uh, Bruce, community engagement. Uh, Bruce, they, yes. How are they doing on fixing the damage that we still continuously hear about on uh, TELUS? I will get into that uh, briefly, awesome. sir. Uh, anyway, they've, uh, they have contacted uh, the impact municipalities and they're doing more regular uh, per your recommendation and Commissioner May's recommendation on updates with leadership uh, and such. Finally, they do have a dedicated uh, email address to accompany their hotline address for folks. We'll have this out to our team uh, later on uh, this evening so that in those teleses we can also add that uh, to the response going forward. Uh, so that is the good news. Uh, again, and they are, they, are, they are having some forward progress. Now they're not as good news. Uh, they are still well behind uh, the power curve on rectifying poor past performance. Uh, 
uh, and such to include a hardscape and landscape commissioner uh, Goldthorpe that you just raised. Um, as such, uh, Commissioner May and I have ensured that they fully understand the following, that we will continue to receive, that we continue to receive negative comments by neighborhoods regarding, you saw a couple just this week, uh, regarding their operations to include poor workmanship, uh, poor material replacements, lengthy delays in, in correcting errors, and less than professional subcontractors. Uh, we made it clear that there will be no further permits will be authorized uh, for the group that's having the issue. Now, your group's doing okay uh, until they have fully completed their repairs uh, on their current neighborhoods and to ACHDs and the city's uh, uh, satisfaction. We were, uh, Commissioner May and I were very emphatic that this, all this must be done before the snow flies. Now we have a December 21 date that was just put uh, forth. I'm gonna ask our development and technical services team to go back uh, tomorrow and have a discussion on uh, the, the objective and the requirement was before the snow flies. And as I've been, we've been looking at the weather, again, it's a 50-50. We're either gonna have an El Nino or a La Nina, uh, which means uh, it's probably gonna snow like hell. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And then uh, finally, uh, uh, that uh, TDS's financial concerns and stuff uh, are not ACHE's concerns, uh, and such as they move forward. Commissioner May, did I miss anything on that? Okay, uh, so we will keep you posted. I think this is a great step forward, uh, but there are more steps to take, uh, and our team is watching. Is it still not to the severity that we are more than just considering fines? Uh, we're there. We're there. Good. And uh, the leadership knows it over there. Um, uh, so after uh, next topic, if you're all good with that, the Linda Bridge. The uh, 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 as I think many of you know, um, we've had continuing discussions between uh, uh, Meridian staff and ITD and uh, over this issue. And most recently, I uh, had a closed door one-on-one uh, -on -one with Meridian's mayor. And then uh, a couple comments this morning. Uh, and, uh, along those lines, I have instructed our plans and projects team to begin a collaborative approach to fully designing, fully designing, not partially designing, fully designing, uh, specifically as a shelf project only, which is the discussions we've had with, uh, with the mayor and, and, and uh, Garden City, with no commitment for any further engagement. A Linda Bridge overpass with ACHD managing the design project. The first step will be to formalize a three-party agreement with Meridian, ITD, and ACHD that specifically requires Meridian, based on their, uh, uh, their offer, to fully fund this design project. When, with a project with the possibility of additional federal funding, private partnerships, et cetera, that you all have heard about, I truly believe this is the best interest to, of, for all parties to have as many shelf projects on the table, ready to go as soon as possible. And unless otherwise directed, uh, I will be sharing this with, with uh, Meridian's mayor tomorrow. Uh, and as I shared with you a, a couple weeks ago, uh, just a reminder, the 100 foot, I mean 100,000 foot design timeline will be something as follows. And again, this was very conservative. I truly believe uh, that uh, um, we'll be doing, uh, getting this done a little quicker. Uh, so first off, we have to include the project in the Compass TIP. Uh, that's uh, going to be done uh, by December. Develop a three-party cooperative agreement. Uh, it says May here. I'm pretty sure that that's going to be done a lot quicker. And uh, can't that be December as well? Uh, I, Mr. President, I'm sure it's going to be a lot quicker on this uh, and such. Well, um, well, which part would be, which part, the TIP is in December, and then what's the second piece? You just mentioned uh, that would be the cooperative development that says Meridian, you're paying for this whole thing with the $2.5 million that they have already uh, uh, volunteered uh, to forward on. We'll prepare the appropriate designs and, cons and, con and make the uh, cons uh, consultant con uh, uh, recommendation. And then uh, final design to include all milestones, public information, public outreach, uh, our right away. Uh, very aggressive uh, on this, very encompassing. And of course, as I briefed you a couple weeks ago, the target date on this was March 2024. I'm confident it'll get done uh, sooner than that. Uh, now, as we said earlier, if federal funding is the issue, and as you know, uh, Congress is 
uh, working through uh, infrastructure funding. It's not a done deal by any stretch of the imagination yet. But if that would come to Idaho, we understand that's an additional $400 million that would go to ITD. Uh, it would be great to have this kind of ready. Uh, but if that does occur, as we've I've shared with the mayor, and uh, you all uh, fully understand, that's going to increase the timeline because you're using federal dollars uh, moving forward. So uh, after uh, lots of discussion, I believe it's the absolute right thing to do as a shelf project with no commitment uh, going forward by this, by you or the ITD board. Uh, we'll let the chips fall where they may, uh, but I think this is a, a, a good step forward uh, in that. Mr. Has, President, oh, go ahead. Um, the part where you said fully funded, uh, are you saying that Meridian is? Uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, Commissioner May, yes. Uh, the mayor has made several uh, uh, offers to um, us, ITD, back and forth. Uh, it says he has $2.5 million that he wants to put to this project now. And uh, 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 so uh, we're going to take advantage of that uh, so that, again, uh, it is not a, it's not a financial impact on ITD or ACC other than staff time, of course, uh, managing the project. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, we should move forward on it like the funding part. <laughs> yeah, Mr. President. Yes. Oh, so, uh, uh, Director, I just want to make sure, uh, because we've learned some lessons on Cloverdale, that ACC has higher standards than ITD does in terms of protection of um, vulnerable road users, especially on bridges where there's no safe place to go, um, that, they're, that part of that design coming from ACHD involves the physical separation so that we can provide that kind of protection. Um, and I know the rush to get things done sometimes that that might get left out. I just want to make sure up front we understand we want to make this. We don't have a bridge like that uh, over the freeway. ITT doesn't do it, but that's the direction we need to be going. Um, we're doing it out on um, Maple Grove in front of the school. So that's where we need to be going. So I just want to make sure the expectations are that uh, that kind of physical protection for um, bicyclists and, and um, pedestrians mm -hmm. will be part of the design. Mr. President, um, Commissioner Hansen, yes. And uh, I have the deputy director, acting deputy director, sitting right there. Uh, we've already discussed a couple of these things. And that's the reason why we, when we go into these discussions with ITD and the city tomorrow, uh, starting that process, that uh, we will be controlling the design process. Yeah. I think this would be a uh, nice very important with uh, five mile with the kind of protections we're going to get on five mile. Mm -hmm. So uh, doing those two as a model, the rest. Mm -hmm. Mr. President. Yes. Um, Director, thanks for the update. I was wondering, so could you describe all of the different elements of having a shelf project? How much flex, like how much flexibility, what is included in a shelf project in terms of its design? Is it completely fully fleshed out or is it 75% fleshed out? Like, what are those like technical aspects of having a shelf ready project? Uh, Mr. President, Commissioner uh, Pickering, I'm not even going to look at Diane Bevins. If she starts coming this way, that means I've gone too far off the edge. <laughs> but on this sort of specific project, uh, my focus is going to be complete across the board, uh, right away, design, um, all the different things that we have to do if we were doing a project that will be involved uh, with this scope. That's why it's important for us uh, uh, that I've articulated already that uh, we will be managing this design. Design, uh, uh, you're, you're, see, I'm safe. Perfect. So can one condition, because I mean, obviously we had the URD come over and they presented some of their plans and ideas for the south side, which was really helpful. And I asked them if they had done any outreach for the neighborhoods that would be the most impacted that's south of the interstate and they said basically no mm -hmm. so i'm i think as if you go back to the mayor and i'll follow up as well but i think a condition of this should also be that he's going that the city will do some preemptive community engagement because i'm worried that with the design process and all of that gets further along the community that's actually most impacted will not have any say in what's happening uh, uh, mr president uh commissioner picking tremendous point we'll make sure that happens but again, the reason why we our, our team has already put this 100,000 foot timetable out there is that, uh, as with all our projects, we want to be fully engaged with the community. We want to make sure we have maximum outreach, community involvement across the board, because, again, there is no commitment on this. But at the end of the day, the second that the Haiti County Highway District Commission and the board says we're doing a design project, uh, rumors start flying. 
Mm-hmm. And so we want to make sure that we are uh, we're treating this as if things were going to happen, if there was funding, if there was time, if there were cons, all these big ifs. But at the end of the day, when this gets put on the shelf, it's one of these things where you put up and just go. That That's what we're looking for. Okay. Thank you. So, so Bruce, uh, shelf project, is that synonymous with shovel ready? Yes, sir. That's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Mr. President, one, one additional question. Um, would it be separate projects? the downstream impacts both north and south of the freeway uh, i'm assuming meridian's not going to pay for those but you know when we open up lender and make those connections the lender north and south of the freeway haven't experienced that kind of traffic so are those separate projects um are those incorporate going to be incorporated because it's going to be a significant impact on both sides um, um how, how do we how do we deal with those as a separate as a uh, Mr. President, uh, Commissioner Hansen, you've just exceeded my uh, ability to uh, uh, factually answer that. I'm going to make an assumption here, and you'll let me know if I'm speeding. Um, the full package needs to assess all those things. However, additional uh, 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 projects, those will be separate to comp- uh, to complement this. Now, you said something very interesting, you know, that uh, uh, if Meridian's going to pay A, B, or C. We're not there. Uh, this is strictly a design project to be shovel-ready uh, uh, and such that incorporates all of the aspects that ACHD would normally do on this, like like Cloverdale. Uh, have that all tied in so at some point in time, if funding was available, if ITD agreed, if Compass uh, was on board, if you were all on board, and all the arrangements could be made, that book comes off and we start. I, I need to quit now because I'm way ahead. <laughs> oh, Sir, does that answer your question? It does, and this is it's why I think it's in, important that we have everything in one integrated priority list because a lot of those wouldn't necess- wouldn't be, be they'd be separate projects, mm-hmm. but they might have to be accelerated those downstream mm-hmm. projects in order to time it so that there's not detrimental impacts uh, when we are, when when it's ready to start. Um, so again, I really, um, obviously we're gonna be aware of that, but we're gonna see some projects mm-hmm. on our um, integrated five-year work plan on Lender in order to address that mm-hmm. eventuality of, uh, of a connected uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, Commissioner Hanson, again, great points. I do wanna remind the commission. We just that had this some is folks not... get locked out. What? Some folks just came to the door and then the door not open. I thought it was still open. It's still open. Um, um, I want to remind the commission again, this is not on the integrated 5 year work plan anywhere. Uh, this is, again, a first step in taking proactive actions that in case certain things happen, we're ready to execute. This is really what this is all about. Mr. And, Chris, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to no, I'm, finish I'm, your thought. Um, so when you referenced ITD, if ITD, if ITD, so are, are we doing this in hopes of pulling ITD along with us? I mean, what is their thought on this project? Because they were not quite committed to it. No. So where uh, are they? Uh, Mr. President, uh, Commissioner May, good discussion. Um, we've had those conversations already with District 3, and uh, uh, I'm comfortable in saying that if ACHD is ready to go, then they'll join this collaborative process. But again, there is no commitment to spend a dime uh, of ITD or ACHD dollars uh, uh, going past this design stage at this point. So I think, again, this provides an opportunity to put something on the shelf uh, if events occur that will allow all of you and uh, the ITD uh, leadership and board uh, to say, yeah, this is now a priority. And just being candid, it's not uh, right now. There are other things that ITD is going forward uh, with. But at the end of the day, a city has made this request. Uh, it is their number one priority on the integrated five-year work plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I read what you uh, – anyway, uh, and such. So, so, so a little yeah. bit of a shift because when we wrote that letter, you know, mm-hmm. we support the project. It but it was kind of contingent if ITD – if this is a priority for ITD right. – ACHD mm-hmm. will follow. Mm-hmm. This is more consistent with what I've been hearing that they were kind of looking to us to have a little bit of skin in the game before they 
move towards yeah. any sort of commitment. Yeah. So that seems to be kind of yes, ma'am. And I think it's a uh, it's a great compliment to ITD because at the end of the day, um, ITD can put up a bridge, but they are very concerned about the impacts it would have to the Ada County, the local jurisdiction. And so I think it's a great start of a melding of operations. And I truly believe that that first step of the uh, three-party agreement will tell the tale of how things will work next. Director, I just have one more question. Is Are the maintenance costs, are those part, like is there a maintenance cost analysis of like what it would cost to the district to build this bridge and maintain it? Or is that something that comes after we actually decide to fund building um, the bridge? Uh, Mr. President, uh, Commissioner Pickering, great question. It's a yes to both. Uh, yes, when we do the, when the design is, is built, we'll know specifically what the costs are. It'll be uh, it'll go out to bid uh, from a design perspective only uh, and such. And yes, when we look at something like this, we do take into account what the maintenance costs could be. But is it intimately involved in that one project there? No. Uh, that comes later. Okay. Thank you. Just so we all know, um, the city the city of Meridian is fine with us uh, doing the design on the whole project, but they would also be just as happy if only the bridge and the southern portion of the projects were done and then traffic allowed to go. And uh, I've had personal conversations with all involved and, and told them we would rather not do it that way. So there we go. Okay. Um, uh, commissioners, as I shared with you last week, uh, we have continued working with the Surprise Way HOI regarding their concern on speed and pavers and such. Um, most recently, we have offered to leave the pavers in place if the HOA would agree uh, to maintain the pavers going forward. Uh, the HOA declined. And so, as we have already committed to a future speed study, radar feedback signs, and additional traffic calming investigations, uh, potentially ball balls, et cetera, to assist in their concerns, uh, to address their concerns, uh, we would prefer to, uh, to remove the bricks as originally contemplated and move forward on this project. So I'm just giving you a note on this. If you have any concerns, please let me know. Uh, but uh, uh, I truly believe our staff has reached out multiple times, and this was the one thing and uh, unfortunately, uh, the HOA elected not to do that. Uh, Commissioners Goldthorpe and Pickering, uh, we, have final, we are finalizing your reservations for the upcoming Idaho Association of Highway Districts Convention. And I believe that both of you, you have the uh, initial um, um, agenda in front of you. And on the back of that, you see some flight schedules. I'm going to make assumption that you're going to want to do a direct flight into Spokane uh, as, oppo as opposed to going to Portland, Seattle, or San Jose uh, mm -hmm. and such. Uh, uh, Stacy is working those uh, things for you uh, and such. And so uh, if you're okay with that, we'll continue to move forward uh, and such. But uh, we'll set up your transportation from Spokane uh, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, convention and back again. And uh, as we get more in detail from uh, the Idaho Association of Highway Districts will make sure that both of you have that. And as a reminder, uh, Stacy will be attending uh, to make sure you both don't get arrested uh, such as we go okay. forward. Um, the direct flight is with Alaska. Uh, Southwest does not do a direct flight anymore into, into Spokane. So anyway, that's in front of you. If you have any concerns, please let either Stacy or I know and we'll work them for you. Um, uh, commissioners, I have also given all of you a draft map of our future winter operations regarding sand and salt and our decision matrix as we go forward. As you know, we're working with Idaho DEQ uh, to finalize the game plan for uh, what we're going to do next year. And as you can see uh, on that color-coded map that Jennifer and her team have put together, and they've done a lot of work in this, um, uh, that blue area, that main blue area, that's where uh, we are very comfortable recommending to DEQ that we can disperse uh, after uh, diluting uh, to, our, to their standards itself the salt that we already have that there are no waterways that will flow into the Boise River uh, and such. Everything outside that blue uh, area, our engineering team, our environmental team, and our maintenance teams, and our general counsel have worked through to make sure that we were not in any type of harm's way. Now, this is a draft. 
We'll be finalizing all this this week and then sending it to uh, DEQ for their review and approval before we do anything uh, with this. And now the bike lanes on floating feather. I'm director, sorry, the, the, the blue salt usage, can we give you feedback by a certain time? Is there a timeline that, that would work for you? I'm sorry? I'm, I'm just, I was looking at the map and there's a few places where I know that there's reservoirs and things like that. Um, ab when, 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 absolutely. Can I, when can I get you that feedback? Yeah, absolutely. If you could, please, uh, I'd like to get that back. If it fits, if it's convenient for you by close of business on Friday, Sounds good. Uh, and such, I greatly appreciate that. And I'm sure the head of maintenance would appreciate that too. Um, and now, as I said earlier, the bike lanes on floating feather. Bottom line right up front, uh, our most recent attempt to smooth out the bike lanes did not work as expected. Uh, as such, uh, I am not recommending spending another additional dollar nor time on the pilot friction seal application for the, uh, as our BAC and other riders have been very specific. It did not work. Uh, Bruce? Yes. Have, if we were to try it on um, better surfaces than the old degraded surface on floating feather, we had a little bit of a conversation mm -hmm. on that a few weeks ago. Right. You're thinking that's not going to work either? No, no. I'm specifically talking about the floating feather Super. one, Mr. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Goldthorpe. Uh, so specifically on floating feather, we will continue to explore other options and treatments uh, that we can test and be expected to survive. And this is key, winter operations. Uh, I know there are, there are, there are uh, treatments that do appear to work in other areas, but they definitely do not survive. Uh, I mean, they don't have the, uh, the challenges of winter ops in, in those areas. That being said, we will keep you posted. I know our team's looking at every option and we will continue to try these things, but on other roads that uh, may not be as, as damaged or as, as, as rough as floating feather is, that still works and we're still looking toward that. But floating feather, it's on the radar scope. We're going to find something to make this work uh, and such. And then finally, commissioners, uh, chip seal operations will be completed next week as uh, we're addressing a few catch up things tomorrow. Uh, as I shared with you earlier, uh, we will be up uh, doing the landfill road uh, on Sunday, uh, fogging that road the next week. And then hopefully having the paint, uh, our paint team up there next Friday, that time frame, uh, so that uh, uh, everything is complete across the board. Chip Seal Victory Celebration Party is 16, 16 September. You'll all be invited uh, to that. And as normal with the Ada County Highway District, as we're winding down Chip Seal operations, I need to assure you all that our mechanics and folks are already working prep uh, equipment for winter operations uh, going forward. So commissioners, that's my director's report for the day. I'll stand for any questions you might have. And I guess we got about two and a half minutes. You have two and a half minutes. Thank you. Commissioner McKinney, are you still good on audio? Yeah, yeah, the volume okay. is fine. Uh, it has cut out a couple of times for a few seconds, but uh, it's much better than last week. So far, anyway. Well, as, as you all know, our, our IT team went top to bottom on things. We found a couple of things, uh, this one right uh, and such, but uh, uh, please let me know if uh, uh, 
it goes out and you're not connected. I will. Uh, Mr. President, Commissioners, it's now uh, 6 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ada County Highway District, and we would invite you to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, welcome. As we begin our meeting today, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. We'll move over to the consent agenda now. And items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and will be enacted by just one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless the commissioner or citizen so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda. All consent agenda items are commission action items unless noted. Do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? Move to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. We'll go over to our uh, regular agenda, and there is only one item today, and that is the fiscal year 22 budget public hearing and request for adoption. Um, before I turn the time over to Christine Candler, who will give us a riveting presentation. <laughs> <I'm> <clears throat> with bated breath. I'll just say a few things. Uh, Welcome to tonight's main event, the 2022 fiscal year budget hearing. A lot has gone into preparing for tonight, including work sessions, seeking public input, holding public meetings, all during the last year or close to that timeline. It may be of interest to some of you that we will begin the process for the 2023 fiscal year budgeting process in about two weeks. <clears throat> And this entire process can be followed either here in person or via Zoom if you keep track of what's on our agendas each week. We will likely have a brief presentation from staff, after which time we will ask questions as a commission and then hear from any of you who wish to be heard. Please understand, this tonight is an end of a process, not the beginning. Why I say that is because we are not writing our budget tonight per se. We are approving a number, the dollar and cent figure, which when certified will create the levy number that you see on your ACHD portion of your November property tax bill. If you follow the current economic news, you already know of the incredible appreciation of labor with real property values. If you follow this budgeting process, and we hope you do, and the ultimate levy certification, you will come away with the knowledge that real estate appreciation has far less to do with how high your property taxes are than you may have realized in the past. The budget amount that is approved this evening, when divided by the retail value of all of the properties here in Ada County will give you the levy number for the coming year. It will undoubtedly be less than the levy number from last year. The levy number has gone down a tremendous amount over the six and a half years that I've been here on the committee. It has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with personal philosophy. It's simple math and not even Common Core. Contrary to what I have read in the recent past in the media, our decision this evening will not result in an increase or decrease of anyone's entire property tax bill. 
it may come as a surprise to some that we got that we have received in the past a much larger bang for the buck say even five years ago when we passed a lower budget amount than we will with whatever we pass tonight why you might ask a huge surge in inflation for the items we procure to build and maintain roads and run this agency has been the cause. As has been mentioned from this dais on several occasions, we are kind of digging a hole for ourselves where our level of capital expenditures for roads is concerned. This because of the constant reduction over time in the buying power for each dollar of revenue we receive from whatever source that revenue comes from. This year, due to legislative restrictions, as well as our priority decisions, we couldn't even spend all of our assessed and collected impact fees. The expectations of the public are an interesting thing. Regardless of our revenue, regardless of anything, we are expected to be open for business each day and do an acceptable job for each of the 502,000 individuals living in this county. This according to the individual expectations of all 502,000 and an absolutely impossible expectation to fill. But we've been at this for 50 years last week and expect to be at it for at least 50 more. Our proposed budget includes a resolution already approved by this commission to include or increase the community programs portion of our budget by $5 million for the next two budget years, after which time a newly seated commission will carry on from that point. The reasons for that increase are numerous and, and because I asked for this resolution myself, you should know a couple of them. We currently have a vehicle registration fee here in Ada County that includes an increase or a local option fee, if you will, to pay for two programs, Safe Routes to School and Congestion Management. In a few years, the state statute that enabled this fee in Ada County only will sunset, at which time these two programs will disappear. We at ACHD currently have no reason to think this stat statute will be renewed by the vote of the people because you, the people, the voting public, have already said no once a couple of years ago. This due to the accurate perception that heavy trucks, which pay, as, pay zero for this registration fee presently, create an unfair burden to pay for roads on the owners of smaller vehicles like the ones you rode here, rode into here on today. All we ask of the legislature on this matter is to allow the voters of Ada County to decide who pays that fee. So far, we've gotten nowhere. So the $5 million increase in community programs for the next two years is partly to get ahead of fixing some of the glaring sidewalk gaps, gaps among other projects without which still place some of the most vulnerable road users in real danger on our roads as currently configured. Anyway, you've heard enough from me. We'll now turn the time over to Christine and then to you for comments and testimony. Thank you. Mr. President, yes. I, I just have one quick question for Christine. It's just a, um, two different numbers. The memo and our budget book on page one and in the packet, we reference 154.9. And it should be 151.8. Right. So, um, you want to say why we are at? I made a mistake. It's an error <clears throat> on updating the packet when I have to redo all. All of this is put together manually, so that that's just a mathematical error that I put 154.9 versus 151.8 on there. On pages three and four, it shows the total of revenue being 151.8. Uh, okay, well, 151.9 because we, we round up, correct? Okay. Yep. So, um, okay, yeah, I noticed in your memo today, dated today, that it still said the 154.9. So that just, that just concerns me. I just want to make sure we have the correct in the packet. I didn't know. Okay. Thanks. That never happens. <laughs> 
it's a lot of numbers floating around, Christine. You do a great job. Yeah. I just want to make sure that mm -hmm. we're sure what we're voting on. And Mr. President, Commissioners, for the record, Christine Tandler, Budget Manager. I'm here to present the proposed FY22 budget for adoption this, uh, this evening. Uh, the last slide will show you I will need um, separate motions, both for the adoption of the budget, for the property tax certification, and then depending on the choice um, of the commission, we could need two additional motions for those um, additional resolutions in order uh, to take the additional amount. <clears throat> The uh, budget was created using the capital allocation me methodology as directed by the commission. The reminder. Um, also, public hearing requirements. We were we did follow all the public hearing requirements by statute. Um, in fact, we did an additional um, week of advertising of the uh, budget in the Idaho Press. So some of the basic. Um, bigger ticket items, or we do have rescheduled projects of $5.9 million. Those are costs related to schedule adjustments. This was already approved in the second adjustment. We reduced the FY21 second adjustment by $5.9 million to move those projects into FY22, just to better align with the uh, schedule that's happening. We did see no increase in some of, some of the great benefits that ACHD offers, including medical and dental premiums. The FY22 budget is balanced at $151.9 million. We're showing new revenue of $130 million. Again, those rescheduled projects of $5.9 million and cash reserves of about $8.7. On the expenditure side, again, $151.9. We do have a 50-50 split. Capital projects is shown at $76 million, with operational at 32 and labor at 40.3. Again, and commuter right is shown as a revenue and an expense since they are a separate fund. I will show those as balanced within the overall uh, district, but they are shown separately. They have their own financial statements. Uh, this pie chart depicts the breakup. Oh, no, it doesn't. Not this one. Yeah, this one. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I skipped my page. Um, the pie chart depicts the property or the where all of our revenue sources come from. As you can see, property taxes and highway users fund, which are fuel taxes, are the two largest that we have. Impact fees, um, which are paid by developers, as well as Ada County registration fees, um, kind of bring up the those remaining ones. And then, we, excuse me, rescheduled projects and cash reserves, and. Uh, federal and state grants. Those are ones that are a little more fluctuating throughout the year. It just kind of depends on where we are at that time and the uh, and where we are, what agreements we have with um, federal dollars as well as um, cost shares on projects. Here's the expenditure budget again at 152 or about $151.9 million about a 50-50 split, something that ACHD has been um, maintaining for several years. Um, within this budget, in the planning and project management category, which is the red one, you will, um, we do have a continuation of our neighborhood plans. We are working through the Barber Valley and the Central Bench. We've been through all 10 planning areas, and so we're kind of going back, seeing all the successes that we've had and see if there's um, changes or updates to those plans that need to be done. Maintenance is where a chip still cracks still in winter maintenance. Um, is housed. The development and technical services is uh, our zone inspectors, sub inspectors, all of our project inspectors, engineers, and the like. The capital budget um, is proposed at $76.1 million. I'll point out that the roadways and intersections um, are two separate uh, pieces of the pie, but they do add up to 27%, and those are our CIP projects that are. Um, funded through um, a portion of impact fees. We also show 18% in community programs and the cooperative development is at 14%. Again, last week we did approve a couple co cooperative development projects. Those are gonna be a little bigger, which is um, a little bigger this year as in prior years, just taking advantage of developers being able to help us get some projects done. And as per usual, we do have a very large um, function of our budget related to maintenance, capital maintenance and federal maintenance projects. 
the next few slides I'm going to go through um, some some hi hi and highlight some projects um, in different categories and in different phases uh, that are included in the FY22 budget. So some of the major construction projects planned in the community program um, category is the Kootenai Street traffic calming. This is one that we went through a concept design on. We originally had it planned as three phases, but currently we have it all planned to be done in FY22, which is pretty exciting for the people up there. There's a lot of, a lot of really good stuff happening up there. Roosevelt, Rose Hill to Emerald is a uh, sidewalk project. Um, 11th Street Bikeway uh, includes two RRFBs that'll help with the uh, kids that walk to school to Boise High. 13th Street Traffic Calming goes from, starts at Hyde Park and goes uh, south. It includes uh, bulb outs. Um, and then Christine Street North View to Eustick is another school route. So we're gonna work on, uh, we're gonna get sidewalks on both sides of that street. Um, there's an elementary school to the south and then the high school down to the north. So as has been stated throughout this process, um, we're working really hard to ramp up design to create our shelf strategy in order to have projects that are shovel ready. So if and when funding becomes available, we can go to them. Projects do take a long time to kind of get through that process in order to go through the public process and uh, the design and then subsequent right of way. So some highlights that I'll say here is um, the U stick, we've got U stick Black Hat to 10 Mile, 10 Mile to Linder, and then the U stick and Black Hat intersection. Those are all gonna really help out there um, with the opening of the Waihee School. We've got several intersections in here, Amity and Locust Grove, and then McMillan and Black Hat also. And typically when we talk about projects, we talk about three main phases, design, right-of-way, and construction. So the projects that are gonna be in right-of-way in FY22 are the Fairview and Locust Grove and then the Fairview Locust Grove to Highway 55 project. This is one that the district's been um, working on. There's been some changes in the design of the bike lanes per the direction of the commission that's going to um, make those uh, more comfortable <coughs> for riders, excuse me. So the, la the bottom one is roadway and ADA improvements. This is related to our federal maintenance project. So it was the direction of the commission to begin to kind of have a one and done in the area. So we're going in and milling and overlaying, but we're also looking at bike and pedestrian facilities on these maintenance projects. So this is kind of the first time that we're going through as a maintenance project, having to go in and buy right of way. It's not our typical, typical way that we've done it in the past, but we're, we're going through that. And so this is, uh, it's, it's exciting to be able to go through um, this process. And the major capital construction projects, um, the biggest one on here is 10 mile victory to Overland and 10 mile and victory intersection. We just finished 10 mile and Amity roundabout to the much um, happiness of those uh -huh. in South Meridian. Uh, Gowan Road Bridge is one that's currently under construction. There's still uh, quite a bit of work that needs to be done. Just wanted to kind of put that out there that this should be done um, early in FY22. And the 24th Street Road and Bridge projects, this is something that we started um, a little bit a couple of years ago is bundling projects. And so we are working on that on the design side too, but all of these bridges are in the same general area. So being able to design them all together, we can get one consultant on board and be able to utilize that for um, savings. And Downtown Boise Implementation Plan 2020. So we've been working on what we call DBIP for, I'm gonna say six or seven years. Um, this is the last of those series. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, one to two street conversions. This is a pretty big one. This has um, a lot of improvements from 16th to 1st Street on state. We have RRSBs at 14th and 12th, and then also a portion of capital um, south of Front. So staff approves or staff recommends approving the budget of $151.9 million, authorizing um, the property tax certification and depending on those, we'll uh, determine the resolution. I'll stand for questions. Okay. Any of the commissioners whatsoever have any kind of questions whatsoever to ask of Christine about our budget? Mr. President, I have a question. Yes. <clears throat> Christine, mm -hmm. can you confirm that the raises for the commission and the director are still in there? Yes. 
Why are they still in there? Uh, at the meeting when it was discussed, I only got direction from two commissioners okay. to remove them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Is that something we need to resolve here before we, or well, after the public hearing? It'll be in a motion, yes. Okay. Thank David, you. you got any questions? Well, I have uh, some questions and comments, but I think I'd like to, uh, uh, they're not so much about the, uh, uh, some of these details as they are just generally about the budget and uh, so on. So I'll reserve those until uh, after the public hearing. Okay. Then we will go directly to the public. And I will await with bated breath a list of people who wish to speak. Ms. Deanna Smith, I'll ask you to, I'm going to ask you to unmute. I will officially open the public hearing. And we will begin by hearing from Deanna Smith. Apparently, I can't get a video, but I can talk to you all anyway. So, good evening, commissioners. This is Deanna Smith, 1208 East Jefferson Street, Boise, Idaho. I want to express my support this evening for the proposed tax increases, providing these increases and the increased budget, budget revenues they provide ACHD will be prioritized for improvements for walking and cycling safety, support for public transportation, completion of the low stress bikeway network and the many neighborhood bicycle and pedestrian plans ACHD has worked so hard to develop, demonstrations to assure the final investment creates the desired results, and developing performance measurements that use a safe systems approach to inform network design that creates a safe multimodal transportation system. Some would argue that these priorities are not in alignment with the majority of users, but I would argue that in establishing these funding priorities merely addresses the many years these other modes have been un or underfunded. ACHG has been making good strides on improving walking and cycling safety and creating a network that serves all be users better. Yet the budget and thus our priorities are constrained by a CIP and an integrated five-year work plan that continues to reflect planning decisions from the past. These documents continue to view our roadway network as underbuilt for the growth we're experiencing. But I would encourage you to take this opportunity and avoid what we've learned from the many other places around the country and avoid the mistakes that have been made in an attempt to relieve congestion and really rethink how we look at and plan for transportation. The data about demand is real and I urge you to avoid this pitfall. So I support the tax increases, but not necessarily all the proposed budget expenditures and urge the commission to fully review the integrated five-year work plan and CIP and align them with these new priorities. I appreciate the constraints you feel by the land use decisions that are made, but if you were to establish LOSF as acceptable, this could free up your planning and budgeting to address congestion management by providing and supporting mode choice as a congestion management strategy rather than road widening, thus allowing the budget to fully support the priorities of maintenance of existing infrastructure, safety for all road users, and efficient use of taxpayer dollars. As a countywide highway district, ACHD has an opportunity to take this approach and address the land use issue at a county level and thus really serve all your constituents. I have faith that this commission and your staff are very capable of making this big change. And with the right budget priorities, we can build a transportation network for our future. Thank you for your commitment and your efforts to provide Ada County residents with a safe, reliable transportation system that emphasizes moving people and providing choice for how we move around. Thank you, Deanna. Stacy. Uh, we have Marissa Keith. Marissa? The floor is yours. Hello, commissioners. Um, I just wanted to say that um, if I, you would uh, identify yourself, name, and address. Thank you. Sorry, Marissa. It's been a while. Marissa Keith, thirty-two seventy-nine. 
South Cloverdale Road in Boise. Um, I just wanted to kind of reiterate what Deanna um, stated. I, I also don't believe that we're going to cure congestion by just simply widening the roads. Um, and I would encourage you to keep working on um, changing the impact fee ordinance to include more options for, for what that money can be spent on. And if that requires that you go to the legislature, uh, again, I know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you attempted this once before, but if it requires you to go there again, um, that I, I'm pretty sure you would find some allies within the neighborhood associations that might be able to start a letter campaign to assist with that. Um, I, I hate to say it, Commissioner Goldthorpe, but this year I'm one of those parents that is driving my kid back and forth to school twice a day. Um, he switched over to a new elementary school and, and busing is not available. So even though the school is, is only two miles away, we are not able to uh, ride or walk because we're not able to bridge the gap safely between our house and where the start of the low stress bike network begins. So um, consequently, we're driving him and adding congestion to the road. So um, that's all. I just wanted to say thank you for all the hard work that you guys have put in on this. I know that it has been um, a process for everybody. Thank you, Marissa. Stacy. That is all I have. Is there anyone here in the audience that has signed up? Okay, our question. Hey, you wanted public communication. Gonna speak for the budget. Yes. But on the budget or on a different subject? Okay, then come on up. Now, we do allow for three minutes for testimony, so I'm not sure that you want to uh, get into it too deep. I'm not going to use photos now. I am Kay Hummel, 420 East Crestline Drive. I have a brief comment on the general budget and my appreciation to you. I represent an informal biking group called GASP, Geezers Actually Still Pedaling. <laughs> And um, I'm also a past member of the Boise Bike Boulevard Coalition. And so I've been following all your neighborhood planning and the safer is the school and the need to have the low stress bike network. And I really want to applaud you for responding to requests a year and two years ago to get the signage done more or less all at once. So thank you. Um, I also want to comment that I'm following many of the projects that are in community and are in core. I think they're really critical. I am somewhat disappointed that the fix at Avenue B and Broadway is just marked future because I think it's critical to moving people through the busy area near St. Luke's and on into the East End. So if you can move that up and look as the coming year's budget process and work plans get amended or reallocated, please do so. And um, I think that's all I have to say other than I do support all of the recommendations came, that came to you from your uh, bicycle advisory committee. And I'm also quite interested that you fund eventually, sooner than later, the special street sweeper that can clean these newer bikeways, separated bike paths, because your existing equipment can't do that. And these bikeways will not be adequate or really safe if they cannot be maintained and cleaned on a periodic basis. So that's it from me and Gas, my fellow writers who comment about this constantly. Thank you. I have questions. I'll stand for questions if you have any. Just so you know, Kay, um, during the next four weeks before we get to our integrated five-year work plan hearing evening, we're going to be having uh, work sessions uh, that will deal an awful lot about uh, projects and a lot of them will be community programs projects. I'm aware of that, and I'm unfortunately out of town most of the next four weeks. Do you have uh, 
And I, when, when you number. call on us for a neighborhood comment, I assume the clock can start running again and we might show you what we're interested in. But if there's someone else who wants to get up from another neighborhood first, I can give them the floor too. Any questions for Kay? Uh, uh, Mr. President and, and yes. Kay, um, I know last year we did purchase two, was it, uh, of the, the smaller um, one? And we didn't purchase them. I know we went and looked at them. Are they in the budget? I'm looking at Jennifer because she's the, it's on the maintenance department. That's, we, that's what I understood. They're not in the budget, but we went and looked at them and said, these are going to work, mm. but they didn't get incorporated into the budget. Uh, we have talked about them specifically at the present time as to being out. If we buy them, which I am fully in favor of, that it, it would be a first year, first quarter budget adjustment item. Okay, yeah, th then we should. I, I, I thought we purchased the one we looked at this fiscal year. Let's get it in for a, a, a budget adjustment item. Yeah, I agree with you. And right now, just to point out, we actually share the maintenance of Federal Way multi-use pathway with the city of Boise. So they have some equipment, we have some equipment, but we clearly, as we create more and we're going to do this on arterials. Need to do more. Uh, we have to maintain them. Thanks for coming, Kay. Thanks, Thanks Kay. Love your name. Love Excellent. the name. Thank you, Kay. Thank nice you. to see you. We actually had two more people sign up online, Commissioner Goldthorpe, when you were ready. I'll come back later for my neighborhood then. How's that sound? Or do you want me you now? Whatever you Why don't you go ahead and continue? While you're up. All right. I do have a handout and a couple overheads handout you can read at your leisure but I think you'll see that where I'm going with this oh can you make copies for us then Don't leave us. <laughs> I'll make sure Jim has all of these at the end. Should I begin? You bet. My name is Kay Hummel. I am a board member and the historian of Boise Heights Neighborhood Association. With me tonight is Terry Muse, our president. Um, we are here to talk about two main projects that you will be discussing in coming weeks with the work plan, but because of our inability to be here much in the next four weeks, we're gonna highlight those for you and show you where they are not in this current budget. Uh, we do appreciate all you've been doing just, just for people that are staying tuned on a Zoom, that you cannot see the map, but we will have the map available for viewing on um, our YouTube channel afterwards. But it is just a, of the Boise Hills Drive from Mesa Grande Lane to North 7th Street. That's correct. So that, it is and it's more than that. That's the regional map of our neighborhood, which I was going to introduce you to um, next before I really launch into this. Uh, Boise Heights neighborhood has been going as a steering committee since the 1970s and we formally incorporated in 1994. But I'm saying to you tonight about um, some safety projects that will fall either under maintenance or under community programs is um, really represents about five allied neighborhoods. Uh, Somerset, Ridge 1, Ridge 2, the Somerset Village, what you knew long ago as the Boise Hills Village Apartments, it's now the Somerset Hills Apartments, and our neighborhood, which is 135 homes at this point, soon to be 137. I will point out that Somerset Ridge final has one final plat unbuilt of nine lots, and they have about eight at last count unbuilt but platted lots. So there's 17 more homes worth of traffic coming down this um, traffic shed, namely Boise Hills Drive. And so all told, my rough estimate with the 170 units in the apartments at, at Somerset Hills and all of these allied neighborhoods that all feed into that critical area at Boise Hills, 7th and Brombeck and on down to the regular 
grid system in the North End is pushing five to 600 homes. And there are all ages and actually some economic diversity there because of the mixed use affordability of the apartments. And it turns over with a lot of families. We have children and adults who love to walk there, enjoy the views and get on down to Hyde Park or to places such as the Children's School, St. Joseph's, Longfellow School, North Junior High and Boise High. So there is a heavy use in this corridor of walkers, scooters, cyclists such as myself, and of course the automobiles from all of our homes. So that is the backdrop of the heavy use of Boise Hills Drive. It's classified as a local street, but it behaves as a local collector, as we all know. And a lot of people up there in that yellow area choose not to drive down Ridgeline, which was built as a modern collector street. It is a full 32 or 34 feet wide with dual sidewalks. What we face instead down on Boise Hills Drive is old infrastructure and missing sections. And the first photo, if you could bring it up, uh, says uh, speed bump. I think it's mark number one. I have them in order. And will the public be able to see these? Okay, I won't go into too many, but they're, they're useful for you commissioners to understand this situation. Um, there is a speed hump that has existed because of our request since Somerset Village was built on the right hand, or if you will, south and east side of Boise Hills Drive about 2006. We don't live there, we live above it, but we saw the additional traffic and the two exits for those folks out of Mesa Grande and Painted Rock uh, that they would be encountering all the speeders that go down Boise Hills Drive, and we asked for a speed hump or something to slow traffic there because we were worried for our new future neighbors. It has functioned pretty well, but we have learned. Are you able to get that photo up? Yes, it was. I have my computer here if you want to look at it, if I can plug it into your system. Uh, prob mm, probably not. I've got a, I've got a something that will connect to anyone's USB. Let's let's go ahead and proceed okay. because we will be dealing with this again. We'll send the photos into you by email. How's that sure. sound? Great. Anyway, this is a dangerous speed bump to us, not because of traffic. We like it because we believe in traffic calming for everybody in the zone. The problem here is fire safety for us. Terry can testify because she was involved in fire matters last year, as were I and other neighbors. We have a fire in Boise Heights roughly every two years and sometimes in the allied neighborhoods. Little ones, big ones, but we are the most vulnerable neighborhood on this side of the city because Hulse Gulch is on one side and Military Reserve is on the other. Lots of open wildland interface. The fire department said to us after an August 24th, 2020 fire one year ago yesterday, could you do something about getting that speed bump changed to the modern ones that the fire department prefers where their axle widths can fit through. In fact, we asked for this from one of your staff members about five or six years ago, and we were told to wait for the next time they do maintenance or re-chip seal Boise Hills. So that was five or six years ago. This past year, our president also asked and conversed with, I believe, one of the commissioners here about it and received the same answer. So I know this doesn't rise to the level of a community program, but I'm highlighting it for you that if there's any way in the maintenance budget and in the name of neighborhood safety, we can get that one speed hump fixed so the fire department can respond to us quicker, it'd be great because we are so far out of the normal service range and we have been since fire station two moved in the early 90s up to Cartwright Road. So that's enough about that. I think you get the picture. I have some great pictures in there, but you'll get them later. So that's issue one. If you could attend to that speed bump, we'd sure appreciate it. The second one is more concerned with the handout I gave you that looks like this. And um, my comments in blue, I won't read them to you. I'll just summarize that the missing sidewalk section, and here we do compliment you so much for the extra five million that you will put into community programs in the next two years. And okay, 
Um, it's five million per year. Yes. And uh, it's going to be the idea is to divide it up geographically between the districts. Yes, I've heard that, Commissioner, and thank you for pointing that out. Um, that can that's an interesting comment. I won't get into it here because not all geographic areas are equal in terms of um, old infrastructure and needs. They are not all, they're not all look alike. You you might be really surprised, but that's certainly for another time. Yes, sir, I agree. So at any rate, we'll we'll point to this area where I have the green on that B dot or A dot there in the overhead. That is the nexus of what we're talking about. It is where Boise Hills Drive turns into North 7th and then Brumback. And the beautiful slides you can't see show you all kinds of scary things with people walking in the roadway on the right or north side as you are descending Boise Hills Drive um, because there's no sidewalk there. It ended with Somerset's early phases and where their property ended, they didn't build any further sidewalk and it's old infrastructure below all the way down to 7th and Brumback and there's a missing sidewalk section. And it makes a big bend and it's scary and narrow and people do not cross to the other side and use the existing sidewalk that has been there since the 40s when Jack Simplot built Boise Heights, Boise Village because it's too scary to cross there. And so they are coming up the other side and they just get in the curb and gutter and walk. And there are always four to five large trash cans sitting in that gutter that never get moved back onto the property because there's no sidewalk to put them on. So it's just a cumulative problem there. And what I will tell you about it is in my blue highlights in terms of what we have done to address you and the city of Boise on this, we understand we came to you in August of 2016 with this handout and asked for that. We did get some sharrows and um, some painted bike lanes in that corridor, and we're really grateful for that. You enacted that immediately. And I believe it was on your motion, Commissioner Goldthorpe. What didn't happen was the missing sidewalk, and we asked for two then. Right now we're only, and because this was a joint project between ourselves and two other neighborhoods, what we're really just focusing on is that missing segment on Boise Hills Drive between Mesa Grande and North 7th. And it was rated by Boise City when we started going through them and then they turn over their priorities to you, usually about March. We learned to get into the process after we addressed you personally in August of 2016, five years ago. We started telling them every year, this is the missing segment, this is our highest priority and a couple other things. It remains our highest priority. It is not in the community programs. Boise City two years ago had it rated as their number 19 priority, where, whereas it had started out down in the 50s or 60s. I was going to say that's pretty good because they usually have, what, about 80 priorities? Yes, they do. Yeah. That's <laughs> correct. And it's, it has risen to number 19 a year ago. This year it slipped to 21 because of some needs at Capitol Boulevard. So that's where it is, but it is not in community programs anywhere yet. And I have figured out probably why, and you all at staff or commissioners can fix, uh, enlighten me if I'm wrong, but I think the reason why is because on my last page, I know your criteria for missing sidewalk sections are mostly and highly relegated to places where there are no sidewalks on either side of a roadway. And here we have one. But Actually, it it's at least from my my perspective, it's the gaps. It's the gaps, and we have about 450 mi miles of gaps in, in this county. Yes, sir, I see that. <laughs> At any rate, this is one of those instances where we didn't fit the criteria because there is a sidewalk on the other side, but we have this highly, highly dangerous, scary situation where this thing bends, narrow sidelines, and um, so it is. For that reason, I believe it has never appeared in your community programs, despite the fact that Boise City transportation people and the mayor have forwarded it to you with higher priorities each time. And uh, now it's in the top 25 in their view, and we hope it can get into your top 25, and maybe you could start the design, the funding for the right-of-way that may have to be acquired if you don't own the right-of-way there, and um, get her done for everybody's safety. That's basically all I have to say other than it is a crying need and this is, will be our sixth year asking for it. And anything you can do with that new 5 million or budget um, balancing, if you get 
other infusion of funds from the new national um, infrastructure bill that hopefully will be passed very soon, we hope you can juggle out the couple hundred thousand or less that it might take to do this crucial missing sidewalk on Boise Hills Drive between Mesa Grande and North 7th Street. Thank you, Kay. Thank you for giving me the time. Any questions? We haven't thank seen you, you for so long. <laughs> I've been traveling, but thank you all for the service you give us, and it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Kay. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. President, I just I just want to appreciate Kay, and I know I've talked to some of the people who are building up in the foothills, and they're surprised that when they pay their impact fees, it doesn't go to address the things that the new traffic is helping to aggravate. And I think that's absolutely critical that we I identify the broadest possible use of impact fees under the current law and keep pushing, uh, I think as Deanna or, or Marissa said, pushing to continue to expand that because uh, certain things that are safe when there's low traffic become very unsafe when there's more and more people driving on it. That's so correct. And if I might add, um, none of you were on the commission. I actually served on ACHD's very first impact fees committee. Well, Susan we should, Stacy and Don Nickram and some other great people, and I was proud to do that. And so I understand the guts and federal uh, law governing impact fees and how you have to mind your P's and Q's and, and satisfy legal matters, but more importantly, how you have to satisfy the many, many residents and needs in this complex county. And I know it's hard. Yeah, and I think it's becoming more so because of, especially in Boise and Meridian increasingly, is pushing for development in existing neighborhoods. You know, they want to use existing neighborhood infrastructure, and so they're pushing for densities, apartments, and so forth. Well, what that's doing is then saying those folks are paying impact fees, but they're not. We're not able to spend them on the impacts that that growth is having. We Correct. spend it elsewhere. Right, because they that's have to go. Change. They have to go to expansion of the system, as I understood it. They go to expansion of the system. We narrowly define expansion of the system, and so uh, if you were to trace the impact fees that those neighbors up there that are building above you, uh, they may well be paying for the widening of Lake Hazel, uh, which chances are they've never driven on. Yes, sir. So, okay, one last thing. I don't want to send you away depressed, but. We actually had $8 million worth of impact fees this past fiscal year that we couldn't even spend. I'm aware of that. I heard your initial remarks. And yeah, yeah it, it was a problem. crazy year getting projects out and done, wasn't it? Well, no, we didn't have matching dollars for them. That's what the problem was. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And thank you, all of you. Thank you. Okay. Stacey. Mr. Chris Stanley. Chris, you're on. And I have to unmute you. So, give me. Nope. Uh, I'm not getting video either. It's, it looks like there's a setting issue. Nope, but we've had too many bombers, so nobody gets to show the <laughs> okay. video anymore. Sorry. Got it. No problem. No problem. Nobody needs to see my face anyway. Uh, Commissioners Chris Stanley, 2903 East Gloucester, Boise, 83706. And thank you for the time. I want to commend the commission and the district certainly uh, for their continued support for community programs. It's a it's an incredible program, and I hope that it continues in the next two years and beyond. Tonight, I want to speak on two specific issues, and definitely as they they relate to impact fees in the CIP, because I firmly believe as a practicing planner, member of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and also as part of your pedestrian advisory group, that we have two major problems. I firmly do believe that as currently constructed, ACHD's impact fee program is broken and it's actually improved or actually addressing and, and, and encouraging sprawl. What I mean by that is as it's constructed, it's a one size fits all methodology. Those who are constructing in the built environments and in the downtown environment areas are paying essentially to subsidize those in the greenfield. This is not what good growth is really about. And it's not about what I know the district really is about. So I would highly encourage the district to take this up, this issue up, probably not tonight, but at another point. And that is to essentially break these districts, break this whole process up into greenfield versus urban. Those who are in the greenfield 
really should be paying more because that infrastructure is not there. Those who are building and taking a chance in the existing neighborhoods or where that infrastructure is shouldn't have to be subsidizing those who aren't, specifically in the name of community programs and sidewalks and bike lanes. So as constructed now, those who do pay impact fees in those built areas basically don't see a return on their investment or what they're being asked to contribute. That's the second problem and something that I know that you can address as we speak. I want to bring up the point that an impact fee, as mentioned by Commissioner Goldthrope, has to be met by property taxes, right? Well, if the property taxes are being paid by those who already live here to match the, the fees for those who are going to live here, and it seems to me that the community has a say and probably does want to see the types of things that they support over and over again, i.e. sidewalks, crosswalks, bike facilities, and so forth. So amending this is a major issue, and I really believe that the district has the authority or at least can start to examine this. Because if you have no money in down years to build sidewalks, and we have money that can't be allocated towards sidewalks when we have plenty of money, then we've got a problem. And that problem needs to be resolved. And I hope that tonight and in future evenings, you can address uh, some of the things I raised tonight. So I appreciate your time. Good luck with the rest of your hearing. Thank you, Chris. You, you probably already know we will be addressing this once again um, at the legislative level, uh, which will, the meetings with uh, the legislature, certain legislators anyway, will begin fairly soon. Anybody have any other comments or questions for Chris? Okay, Stacy. We have Eric Willinson. I can never say your last name. I'm sorry. Eric, you're on. I'm going to ask to find him. Thank you. And Stacy, you got my last name right. I'm Eric Wilson at 4906 West Wymosa Street, Boise, Idaho, 83703. Um, commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to provide comment this evening related to the fiscal year 2022 budget for ACHD. Um, I just honestly want to appreciate and show appreciation for funding for community projects and bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure, like those low stress bike network, um, increased coordination with Valley Regional Transit and consideration of pathway crossings that are in this budget and have been part of conversations over the past year. Um, this, I feel like it's really important as we're starting to see cities investing in the Treasure Valley and in Ada County investing more in these same strategies, including both Meridian and Boise, where we're seeing an uptick in coordination and support for Valley Regional Transit compared to historical norms and an expansion of urban pathways and bike and pedestrian yeah. infrastructure. We know from statistics across the country that focusing solely on car-centric road widening strategies, especially in agency CIPs, will negatively impact public health, road safety for all users, traffic congestion, and the tax burden for future generations over the life cycle of road construction, and especially in an area that's growing as fast and furious and sprawling as fast and furious as Southwest Idaho. For myself and my neighborhood along the State Street Corridor, we're experiencing that profound change and we're seeing that population growth unfold in real time. Um, I don't, I'm not against the population growing around here and it's been good to see um, the affordable housing project get approved at Arthur and State Street um, and have that bid awarded by the city of Boise. There's also a public neighborhood meeting for another five story building almost right next to that one at the old Turner's bar site. Um, so we know our neighborhood knows that there's going to be more people moving along this arterial and that this is not um, exclusive just to our area of the county. This is happening all over the county. So as a new father of a five month old daughter, I'm concerned not just for my daughter, but also for other parents and young people across the, count, uh, across the county. And I urge you to consider exploring mechanisms to expand and protect funding for multimodal trans strategies, not just now, but in the future as well. Um, to help protect the quality of life for all residents in Ada County, even those who can't speak up now, but will deal with the financial, public health, and safety ramifications of decisions that are being made in the present. Thank you again for your time and consideration and for your service and leadership in our community. Thanks, Eric. Any questions or comments for Eric? Stacy. We have Cynthia Gibson. Cynthia Gibson. Um, I just got an email from you. I know. Good evening, President Goldthorpe and members of the commission. My name is Cynthia Gibson, and I live at 2004 North 9th Street. 
Um, so I've lived in this valley for many years and I've watched it grow exponentially and I've seen the many millions of dollars that have been spent to keep us in our cars. But there is no better time than right now to focus on less expensive travel modes than these cars. I support the community programs at $5 million per year. These are small projects and they have enormous impact on people's lives. These programs are vital to our communities. I fully support a budget amount for temporary um, traffic calming demonstrations. Uh, there are so many neighborhoods that would benefit from inexpensively trying out different traffic calming ideas. And if you want a conservative budget, this is an incredibly conservative approach to decide what facilities to put down on the road, in my opinion, before costly construction. I'm happy to learn that you are seriously considering doing some of these demonstrations and I believe that it's badly needed in many neighborhoods. Um, in fact, in um, my own neighborhood on 8th and 9th streets, we easily collected well over the 75% threshold of um, signatures because our neighborhood, our neighbors want um, slower traffic also. We'd like to get started on that immediately. Finally, I can attest to the fact that 30 years goes by very quickly and the decisions that you make now will still be here in 30 years. And a balanced transportation system today means building for all modes. Um, and this is why the community programs is incredibly vital to our communities. So thank you for this opportunity and thank you for the effort of the commissioners and staff. And I will stand for questions. Cynthia, did you get the reply to your email earlier today? I did, thank you, Commissioner Goldthorpe. Okay, good. All right, Stacy. The last thing that I do have is that uh, I got a communication from our communications, uh, Deputy Director of Communications, that a TELUS did come in and it had an attached letter about the budget. Um, I don't know if you want me to read it in or if we'll just send it to you during our normal TELUS process. Just send it to us during our normal TELUS process. Thank you. Did we have anyone sign up? That is it. Okay. Yeah. I was just going to ask, would you please come up and state your name? And okay. Sorry, sir. <laughs> I figured you weren't just here for looks. <laughs> no, I wish I were. <laughs> My name is Mike McGrade. I uh, live at 5002 Alwar Street in Garden City. Um, you know, the tax increase, uh, I, I think, should be spent at least partially on uh, the growing neighborhood of Adam Street, right out here, and Allworth, which is where I live, um, and beside the Boise River. There are a lot of people there. Not many of them are coming up to speak about what's going on in their neighborhood. Um, what I request, though, is a study to, um, to, to, I guess, give something that would look at the, uh, the rise in driving and the explosion of residential uh, use of the area, it's really, I think it has exploded from uh, the, the place that is across the river from um, the surfing place. There's a lot of nice things there. But on my side of the river, there's just a bunch of residential stuff. So I would request a study to look at the rise in uh, the residential explosion. I'd, it would be nice to have some of the effort spent on, is this making weird noise? No, you're good. Okay. Um, I would like to uh, see some effort be spent quieting the traffic along Allworth and ways to do that, ways identified that would really um, help the neighborhood, I think. I'm glad to play, pay the um, inflated tax increases. I think they are a bit inflated, but you know, it's going up. Um, the value of my property went up. Um, but some of the money would nice to see it come back to the neighborhood where I live and work and pay some of those bills. So I have a suggestion for you because Jennifer is here and you mentioned some things that you'd like to see that fall into her purview of maintenance. And perhaps you could, uh, she'll give you her email address and you can send it, send her an email and ask for specifically 
what you want and you will get an email right back letting you know what types of traffic studies have been done and uh, maybe if it's time to do another and discuss the things that you just mentioned. Yeah, not just traffic, but the, the increase of residential, um, just the people there. Is, are, you, are you in Garden City? I am in Garden City. Okay, I would suggest you also appear in front of the city council then with that one. I have done that. Okay, good. Yeah, good. I've uh, given them a lot of my opinions and, you know, I sat on their um, various groups when the pandemic was not happening and so it just kind of withered. But I will do that again. Well, I appreciate you being here. You're a new face and that's really appreciated. Well, thank you very much. I just want to echo that. As uh, somebody that represents most of Garden City, it's just great to have you here. And um, thank you for your testimony. Sure. You're welcome. Yeah, Mr. President, th yeah, thank you very much for coming. And um, I think probably I've heard as much uh, from uh, people from Garden City because there's some really big developments going in near the, near the um, Home Depot and the fairgrounds and a number of places along the river. And again, the, the impact fees those developers are paying are not, uh, it's not eligible to use on any of the impacts you describe and other people describe. And so it, it really is really critical that, uh, as other speakers have said, uh, we reform our ordinance and ultimately the statute, but first our ordinance. That's what we have control over so that we can identify how that growth has transformed the way in which local streets are used and uh, to help ensure that they're protected, uh, the people are protected from that. It would be nice if, if um, we could complete the uh, bike path on our side of the river. And I don't know how much, um, you know, your commission can do that, but it should be nice. The legislature actually told us we couldn't, but the city council and your parks department can. It would well, be nice if the legislature would too. But to your point, though, I feel like we, I mean, that's something as, Somebody that represents that area, I feel like we, I have a seat at the table to get more folks to come together to make that happen. So I really appreciate you sharing that. And she will. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Maybe you can jumpstart those committees again at the city. I can't understand you. Maybe you can jumpstart those committees and those groups you used to sit in on now that the pandemic is over and get yeah. some action going on the city side. So good luck to you. You can I'm come back sure and report to us. Yeah. It's over quite yet. <laughs> no, you be careful. Stay well. Yeah. Thank you. Is there anyone else here in the audience that would like to speak to us about the budget? All right. Then I will close the hearing. And the matter is before the commission for discussion and a motion. And uh, it probably would be good because I know each commissioner probably has some things they would like to say, and I've already said mine. Uh, commissioner McKinney, perhaps this might be when you would like to address the subjects that you have on your mind. I'm sorry, were you talking to me? Yep, unless you got an identical Audio twin. I just cut out for a second there. I, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, all right. Um, um, First of all, the, the key question that we have to answer tonight is um, uh, the extent of the uh, property tax certification. That's kind of the, the focus of things. And um, I've said in the past that um, as we were discussing various alternatives uh, and the sort of budget and tax increase alternative that's before us now, we kind of settled on that and my as a, uh, well, my thought was that there's no way that we could possibly justify more than an eight or 10% increase in our property tax uh, amount. And uh, we've landed at the 10% number. And so the only question, as far as the certification is concerned, um, I'd like to hear what the other commissioners have to say about uh, these numbers that we've landed on. Are you comfortable with these numbers in the two resolutions, uh, the 1% and the 3%, or uh, would you want to perhaps whittle those back a little bit? So that's question number one, and I'd like to hear other input on that. 
But let me, before we go to that, let me just add one thought that I had throughout the discussion and the public uh, input. We've had, um, let's see, I counted seven members of the public who uh, came in and, and expressed their opinions to us. And uh, almost unanimously, they were all saying, go for more uh, community programs, more bicycle and pedestrian facilities, transit, and so on and so forth. And um, that's all well and good. These community programs are all good things. But I would like to speak up for the you know, 99% of the people who live in this county uh, who aren't um, necessarily exactly on that same page because nearly everyone in this county depends upon their automobile uh, to get to work, uh, to go to shopping, uh, to do all of their daily activities, not because of, simply because of the way the cities are laid out. And until uh, the county is building more along the lines of walkable, bikeable communities, that's not going to change for most residents. And so the reality is, even though we have a lot of very outspoken advocates for these community programs, we have to recognize that they do represent a, a minority of the residents of the county. The majority still have to drive in traffic. And even if we, you know, wish that uh, we didn't have the problems of congestion or the problems that, you know, automobiles burning, you know, internal combustion engines uh, present, you know, from the uh, economic and environmental sides, the reality is we can't wish those things away. And for the foreseeable future, that's what most people are going to still be relying upon. And so here's my big concern with the, with the budget. Um, the overall number, uh, if the commission as a whole is OK with this uh, tax increase, I'm willing to go along with that. But the one thing that concerns me is something we, we sometimes call mission creep, in that we get something that's good, and it just keeps growing and expanding and growing and growing out of control. Uh, and that's unfortunately, I think, the direction we're pushing things uh, with, with more and more emphasis on, emphasis on community programs. If we go back to that pie chart that Christine showed us earlier, showing the uh, proposed capital projects, we see that 18% um, of the capital budget is going to community programs. And that is, pri that is primarily you know, these types of sidewalk, bicycle path, and so on projects. But we have to recognize on top of that, that a big chunk of our roadways and intersections expenditures are also adding those sorts of facilities. And as I say, it's not that these things are bad. And I, I get public comments from people uh, that suggest that, uh, gee, that I want uh, our, our roads to be more dangerous for bicycles and pedestrians. I don't want that at all. What I don't want is for one part of the budget to get out of proportion and start, start swallowing up everything else. That's what I don't want. And that's kind of what I see happening. So bottom line is this, when I talk to the residents of Ada County, and I tell them that more than 40% of our capital improvement budget is going to bicycle and pedestrian facilities, their jaws drop. And then they say, gosh, these, they agree with me. They say, these are good things, but to spend way more than 40% of our capital improvement budget on them is not rational. So I'm not, in favor, I'm not against the overall numbers that we've got but I think we're getting lopsided. And I've said this before, but that's where I think we need to do some, some serious thinking. And uh, when it comes time for the, the integrated five-year work plan, I'd like to see us bring things back a little more into balance because I think we've gotten out of balance. And that's my primary concern about this budget. It might help all of us to know that in Dave's district, there is an incredible amount of east-west traffic. 
and uh, a lot of it coming from outside of the county. And so uh, I'm not going to speak for, for Dave's this constituents in his district, but I know that in, um, in my district, I probably would say that I hear more about the types of construction that are involved in community programs than I do about widening the roads, except for on uh, thoroughfares like 10 Mile or Linder. Um, Christine, maybe you could come up for just a minute. Um, Commissioner McKinney asked about a little bit about what uh, some mixes of uh, these increases might wind up being in terms of overall tax increase. And maybe you could, uh, an easy way to address that would be what kind of increase would you expect would come just from the 3% and new construction without any uh, foregone? Are you talking about, Mr. President, are you talking about just dollars coming to the district? No nope, percent increase. It would be under 10%, closer to um, six, right? I can't do math in my head. Let me go get my laptop just one moment, please. <laughs> I knew she could answer it, Dave. <laughs> well, if I may, um, my primary focus was on the uh, the two foregone amounts. Yes, and and just so and we all the commission already understands this, but so that the public will. The amounts that that we are considering as far as foregone are temporary um, tax increases. You once once you'll use it, it's done. It does not increase our tax certification permanently. Correct? It increases it, Mr. President. It increases it for a set amount of time, which uh, the three percent portion has to be specified for a capital project and will specify an amount of time. And at the end of that capital project, and that's the, the foregone three percent. Correct. Correct. Yes. And at the end of that time frame, um, it will be taken out of our uh, property tax certification. Right. This year, that amount is one, about $1.3 million. Gary handed me this a spreadsheet, one of the many ones that I've done this year. <laughs> and if we were to just take the 3% in new construction roll, it's, it, it, it is a 6% increase, about $2.5 million. Okay. And then the foregone is on top of that, correct? Correct. At right. about 1.6 for the two. Does that answer your question, Dave? Well, the the primary concern from uh, uh, from many quarters has been about you know taking the foregone. That's what a lot of um, you know uh, constituents and other uh, legislators and so on. That's been their primary concern is our taking this foregone money. Uh, and so that I believe is the subject of the two specific resolutions. Uh, the 1.3 million, I believe, and the, and the 3 million-ish. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about. Okay. Um, and, and I'd like did to get Christine's answer... the members of the commission if they have any reservations or concerns about approving those numbers. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what my concern is right off the bat, and that, that is those are temporary. If uh, my My preference would be if we're going to do something that actually increases our base revenue that it not be for something that only lasts for a, a few years and then drops off and we can never use again. If if you take uh, something that's a permanent increase to our base, then that doesn't go. Um, and the 3% that we're allowed by statute to increase plus the new construction, those are the only two that increase our base permanently. And the one, Mr. President, and the one percent foregone for M and L. The M and L stays permanent. The one percent allowable by in House Bill 389, we can take one percent of our property tax certification um, for maintenance and operations, and that is perpetually. Okay, now I'm even more happy that I know you because <laughs> I didn't keep making a mistake. So, Mr. Thanks. President, I just have a question. Yes. Christine, did you say then? Um, I think it is the number two with the 3% new construction. That's 6%? Mm -hmm. That is? Okay. Thank you, Christine. And then the 1% for the foregone, that goes into our base. But then the 3% for the capital project, when the project's complete, it goes, we put it back. 
Mr. That's not a permanent. Mr. President, okay. Commissioner May, that's correct. So in both of the amounts with the, the any of the amounts that are, we're taking of our foregone balance are reduced from our foregone balance. So then when that um, $1.3 million of foregone uh -huh. for capital project is dropped off, it's just gone. It does not go back into okay. there. Super, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any shorter, longer speeches here? Yet? Well, I, I'll just address a couple of things. I really appreciate, Dave, the, the conversations we have. Um, you know, I actually agree that there's one part of the budget is kind of swallowing up the other, and and that's been evidenced by the the uh, growth in the amount of money we have to spend through the impact fee system and the narrowness of the definition of what that can be spent for. Um, having served on the commission now for over eight years, most of that time until last year was uh, we were we had loaned money from the general sources, property taxes, uh, to pay for impact fee, uh, the impact fee fund. Um, and so we were paying off that loan balance. Um, that balance now has grown substantially now eight million dollars um uh you know we we increased impact fees last year there's pressure people want uh growth to pay for itself we hear that over and over again um what the complexity is that i think speakers spoken to today is that in fact it's it's not a lot of the people all over the county who are frustrated that they're in they're in congested traffic and wish this road was bigger the road they're on is not going to get bigger um, that particular arterial they're stuck on, or the traffic light they're stuck on, because there's a bunch of arterials coming together, and that's been built out to, to the maximum under our plan. The build out's further out. So actually within the city limits as you approach the city centers and the activity centers, that's where the frustration is. They're, they might think, oh, well, these roads are going to be widened, and they're not. That would be extraordinarily expensive because you're, you've already got private property there. Um, but what's driving it, in fact, is our projection of what growth might be in 2030, 2040, future residents. And so we project out in our capital improvements plan because we are obligated under law to say, if we build out this, this is what the system is going to be. And we can't charge an impact fee unless we have a capital improvements plan that tells exactly where we're going to build stuff. Well, now we're collecting that money. Um, and... And yet the cities increasingly are saying, we have infrastructure that we've built and paid for um, that the taxpayers on the hook to maintain. We would like some development in those areas. And we're pushing to try and get development in those areas. And they're getting pushback from developers saying, but our impact fees aren't gonna be used, at least on transportation, to provide the transportation network that we'll need to make this function. And the neighbors don't appreciate that, you know, there's going to be a, a denser neighborhood uh, and that there's going to have to be some changes to those roads in order to accommodate. They were quieter roads. Now they're going to be busier roads. And I can come up with all kinds of examples. We're dealing with that on Rose Hill. And we're, going to, we're dealing not just with the ed, in, uh, intersection uh, that is in an area I'm very familiar with, Rose Hill and Owyhee, but the whole area of Rose Hill and Franklin, because there's going to be there is already expansion and development along Franklin. And in order to get to downtown Boise, they take Rose Hill. So people there are recognizing there's growing traffic. Those kind of things ought to be used. But we have this thing called community programs, which is, you know, we're trying to hit $5 million, which is about 3% of the budget. Um, and a few other things we can do through maintenance. But the the concern, I, I agree with your statement that one part of the budget is is appearing to swallow up another and i would say it's actually the way in which we've got this structure and i think we need to deal with it this year and i think we need to deal basically say the the five of us uh two new commissioners and three older ones um who are uh, uh, able to look at and revise our ordinance and i want us to do that between now and the next budget i think we can do that um because this the this and I've talked to legal counsel, the state statute gives us a little more room than we take advantage of. It's not, it's not going to be easy, but nobody said this job was going to be easy. And I think because of the complexities of ensuring that, that good development in existing areas 
happens in a way that growth is then paying for the impacts of that growth, we have to do that to our ignorance. If, in fact, the legislature gives us some more tools in the meantime, that will be even better and we'll have that additional flex. We'll continue to ask for it. So I think that's really important because um, uh, the, the, um, the budget we're adopting, my, I, I see myself as the, the, the fiscal hawk uh, and that when you build something, when you've built something or taxpayers in the past have built something, you have an obligation to make sure that that something, that asset returns value. You don't want that to deteriorate, so you have to maintain it. And if there are investments that make sure that that value, both the public and private property of that asset, continues to return value to the taxpayers, you need to do that. And that's what community projects and the investments in areas where we have been ignored in the past or areas that we didn't need to worry about because they weren't very dense at that time, but now we do. We need to invest in that infrastructure that people have already paid for, because we're already paying for the maintenance. Um, and so I'd like to see that happen. And, and one of the things I've suggested, I think that helps, will help us to do that, is to just integrate this into one integrated priority list so we can see this, and the cities and the county and all of other partners can look and see where the priorities are. And then as money becomes available, whether it's through fees we charge, uh, through the vehicle registration fee or through the legislature or the feds that then cause some of those things to move up, we can do that. We can do that with the adjustments to the priorities, but we do that with an open eyes that that means other things, as uh, Kay Hummel pointed out, other things sometimes when they get in ahead of the list, that means other things kind of slip down the list. And so we, that happens, that always happens. But if we have one integrated list, we can see how that's moving and we can maybe say, you know, it might not be worth it to take this money because these are the things that are going to return more value. So those are two really big things I'd like to see attached to our uh, action today is to, um, to redo our in impact fee ordinance. We do it every four years. I think we, we need to do this, the five commissioners, uh, between now and June 1st, uh, before we get too deep in the weeds of next year's budget. Um, and I think we need an integrated uh, uh, priority list. I mean, we'll still look at other parts of the list and how they're funded, but uh, we need one integrated list. And I would actually also incorporate, uh, would like us to take up the request from our pedestrian advisory committee and request that a process be developed so that we do scope uh, as part of projects, uh, the use of temporary installations. I think that is really fiscally prudent uh, I think we're moving in that direction, and I'd like that to, to, to reflect the intent of the commission that, um, as, and I know uh, Commissioner Goldthorpe responded to, to the Pedestrian Advisory Committee chair that we're going to try and do that as we adopt the budget adjustments in the next quarter. Um, uh, and so that, that's a really good way of doing it. it. It will get too much into the weeds to try and say, have separate items. It's just in the scoping and budgeting of each project. Let's figure out ways of using temporary installations because, of course, the, once you put them in concrete, as somebody said, they're there for 30 years, and uh, whether you like them or not, we've moved on to other things. Um, so I'd like to see those th three things done. And, and the one, one thing I think uh, Commissioner um, uh, Pickering asked for with respect to, respect to compensation, I also assumed that that was a we we agreed, but I guess it was only two head nods instead of five. So I'd like that incorporate that. Mr. Pickering. Mr. President, yeah. Um, I would just have to, I echo a lot of Commissioner Hansen's thoughts. Um, when I was on the campaign trail, I heard a lot about from neighborhoods about, hey, we generate these impact fees. How come none of those fees come to fix these sidewalk gaps that are in our community? Um, and I just want to thank everybody that tuned in today and testified, folks that came in person, um, testified, because being on the other side, I know that's not easy, so I just appreciate all of you coming in and participating today. Um, and especially in light of the housing crisis that we're dealing with right now, excuse me, you know, a lot of our cities are trying to retool existing infrastructure like the malls or 
do infill. And again, if we're trying to be a partner in all the things that infrastructure does actually impact, you know, making sure that our traffic patterns can support those changes in development patterns and adding housing at the mall or adding housing into Garden City, we should be able to have an impact fee ordinance that provides within legal means, of course, provide that flexibility to accommodate that type of development. Um, we need to be flexible. We need to be able to address the urgent needs of our community and transportation and housing go hand in hand. So I think it requires us to be a really good partner and having that flexibility is paramount. And then as somebody that's brand new in the commission, I've never gone through the impact the ordinance. So it would provide an opportunity for me to learn more about the history around why it is the way it is and how can we retool it if possible to support the needs of our communities today. Um, and I ran to have growth pay for itself. And to answer Commissioner McKinney's question, am I okay with this budget? You know, I've asked lots of questions over the last nine months and you know we were unsuccessful in some of the legislative um requests that we had to kind of make sure that growth paid for itself and to provide those tools um so i feel like just you know in light of the circumstances that we're in this is probably the best that we have to keep the lights on to maintain the momentum on bike ped um projects keep up with keep up with the growth that we're experiencing um, and continue to be a partner with Valley Regional Transit. Because if we are going to actually grow and grow responsibly, fiscally, be fiscally responsible, we have to maximize the entire right of way for the maximum amount of users and support all of the users that use it. And just yesterday, possibly a child was hit on Shinden in my district. And here we have people saying that, oh, if you're driving a car, we need to be able to put all this money towards it. I had the opportunity to, ch I had the opportunity to choose to drive to this meeting today, in part because if I was to bike or walk, it would be dangerous. And we have to continue to make those investments so that it's an equitable infrastructure for everybody. So everyone has the chance to succeed in life, to be safe, to have commerce. Um, and so I fully support Commissioner Hansen's um, request and, and except for the, the raises for the commission, and, and perhaps maybe I'd be some, I'd be comp I, I would compromise potentially to have the president get some more money because I just have seen how much work it is for you, Ken. And I know other uh, councils and things do pay the presidents more for that time commitment that it requires. They do here too. Oh, do they? It hasn't, uh, wasn't very apparent to me. $300 a month. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so then never mind. All right, there we go. <laughs> But no, in light of that, though, I think, <clears throat> you know, somebody is, here didn't know that, right? I guess I, I, again, I'm learning all the time. Um, but it's just, it's a hard time for a lot of folks. And I've seen how much we've worked, but I just don't feel like it's the right time to get raises. Um, and we should set our example, especially if we're taking a little bit of foregone. So that's kind of where I stand. Well, I do, have, I do have one question. You have the opportunity to work, drive your car, which you did. Yes. You have the opportunity to ride your bike, which you didn't. How about your horse? Ah, she doesn't live at my house, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Should I should ride my horse sometime down here for for something <laughs> and be truly multimodal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough levity. All right. So, do we still do we have that before us then the decision about the commission, the colas? Could you pull that mask off by any chance? Oh, for heaven's sake. Having a real hard time. There. How's that? That's probably Do we good. have that before us? We haven't any motion yet before us. Well, and I, for yeah. the for the colas, weren't we gonna discuss that? I mean if we it's it they're in the for budget the right now. So if we approve the budget without having our discussion, then they would go forward. Right. Correct? Right. Yes. Okay. So and Commissioner Pickering had brought that up before. So she had um, and I guess there were only two commissioners that did a head nod. Last year, um, you know, I was not in favor of uh, the commission getting um, a COLA, uh, but I was outvoted. So, um, you know, my, my position really hasn't changed on that. So I would be supportive if that's the will of the commission to forego those. So, Commissioner Goldthorpe, I know you have. Um, you know what we might that. want to do is, is we know right now that there's at least one part of our 
a motion that a majority uh, wishes for, correct? Because now we got three, four, five nots. What, for, for what? For foregoing um, the COLA for the commission mm -hmm. and, and the director. And the director. Okay, that's one thing. Right. I'm going to ask Scott now to start taking notes because, and he's going to have, he's going to earn his keep tonight. Usually in these types of meetings, we work our general counsel to, the de to death, keeping us straight on our motion. Correct? Right, Jim? Anyway, tonight's Scott's right. turn. Yes. Um, let me let me just weigh on weigh in a little bit on this uh, question of the commission uh, uh, pay. Um, I have always been uh, fundamentally opposed to legislative bodies being able to set their own pay or approve their own pay because it's a fundamental conflict of interest. Um, it's always bothered me that that the U.S. Congress gets to decide its salary and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, given, given that sort of fundamental principled position, I would have to agree that uh, we should not be voting ourselves uh, a pay raise as part of the budget. Well, just so you know, we don't have the freedom to change what the legislature has said in effect, although we do have the freedom to defer taking any uh, increases in pay, or not defer, but avoid. Um, you know, we, we don't vote our paycheck in the literal sense that you probably um, are referring to in terms of some of the other legislative bodies in the county. Um, but anyway, having said that, that, that will be part of our motion tonight, uh, because I believe we can all agree on that. Um, now, Mary, do you have anything else that you'd like to say before I open this up for uh, now for a motion that we can craft? Well, are, are we also then voting on the uh, director's cola, or is that lumped in? That was uh, that was I'm also kind of that was also here. mentioned. Yes. Okay, so is that going to be part of the same thing? Yes. We're discussing. Yes. Okay. Thank you for making sure that we're all strong, straight, and narrow, Mary. I figure if we kind of craft this slowly and and. Some of the audience won't appreciate this. We'll avoid some of the possible um, consternation of past years. <laughs> well, I, I would just say that um, of the three things here that Commissioner Hansen has proposed, um, I definitely think we probably need to take a, a take a look at that impact fee ordinance. I think that would be very beneficial. Um, having some type of integrated priority list, I think that could be beneficial. I don't know what exactly that's going to look like. Um, I know you you have this arbitrary deadline to you know have this complete. So um, I would support the concept in moving forward, but you know we, we will need to see what that's going to look like, and and um, you know staff's going to have to um, get right on that because that's just um, yes. And in fact, I, I believe all we need to do is direct staff to that end. Yeah, a heavy lift there. And, and as so far as the temporary installations, we've done that um, down by uh, I think it was on 15th. We had done that. We've talked about doing it on Harrison Boulevard. They're talking now about projects up in the Highlands. So I think that's a smart way to go because there's so many variables and you really don't know until you get something in place. So I think yeah. that would be a really good good use of our money as well. Yeah. So, and it's part of our new once and right, done. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so I would be in, in support of that. Um, as far as our options, am I hearing that everybody uh, is fine with number four? going with that or are we open to more discussion um if it were up to me as far as making a motion for the tax increase i would take only the part that's permanent so, so um then the new construction the three percent and then the one percent yes for the and i think that's number three is that correct christine is that option three She thought she was done for the night. That's what I have on here. I just want to confirm. Yeah, Mr. President, um, Commissioner May, I, taking that combination wasn't one of these six options. 
but we can make it an option. <laughs> well, we have it as option number three, the 3% new construction and the 1% oh, for MNO. Oh, and the 1% for, I apologize. So we have two resolutions. One's a 1% resolution Correct. and a 2% re Correct. resolution. We, so I think Commissioner May is suggesting we adopt one of them, but not another. Or at least she would support that option yes. one, but not the other. That's correct. And um, but that she would support the three percent and con new construction, even though one of them is like three percent in here. It's a different three percent, right? I know they couldn't pick any other. Any more confusing? To make it <laughs> so, thank more you. Convoluted. Thank you for doing these two resolutions separately, so we can vote on these two, and then, uh, or at least come to a conclusion as to the uh, the carbon tax certification at 3% or other um, or lower and uh, new construction. So when we had our initial discussions, I was, um, my uh, preferred alternative was number three with the 3%, the new construction and the 1% foregone for MNO. Oh, you're almost um, I'm omniscient. The, yeah. <laughs> and that's right. resolution 2365 or is that 66? In our packet, uh -huh. I think the packet resolutions weren't they um, pertaining to number four, option four that we. Uh, there we go. Twenty. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Twenty-three sixty-five is the one percent foregone. Okay. Well, the, Commissioner uh, Goldthorpe, is yes. that your support of of that rather oh. than yes. both of them or just one of them? Um, yeah, just the the lower one that's permanent. Yeah, in fact, uh, I think we can probably craft a motion now. Okay. Uh, well, um, if we're ready to do that, Mr. President, I would move that we adopt option number three, taking the three percent, the new construction, and the one percent foregone for uh, maintenance and operations, as well as um, oh, no rate with excluding the four with the four the I for the commission and the uh, that's director. And the, and, and the other two items <clears throat> attached to the budget? The um, impact fee, impact evaluate fee the impact ordinance, fee ordinance. Integrated priority list and um, uh, looking at a lineup for the temporary installation. Yeah. I think we can direct staff to do that and give them a timetable without having to actually in include it in a budget motion. And well, I, I'd like it included in the budget motion so it's for the record. And we know that we have a deadline to get the ordinance, especially the ordinance redrafted, because uh, I think that's really uh, Mr. If President, this is part of the motion. Yes, Dave. I'm sorry to jump in, but at this point, the audio is cutting out a bit. Um, uh, it, it sounds to me like, let me just repeat to make sure that I understand that the, the motion that Commissioner May is proposing is to. Uh, approve the budget the option three which which would include approving resolution 2365 but not resolution 2366 Correct. and also including in with this those five uh, recommendations that commissioner hansen made um it's just four I mean, i'm sorry was it four recommendations yeah i i actually suggested five then realized it should be that should be done at the uh, work plan stage well, and my my position on those is that I think all of them are are issues that we ought to deal with later. Uh, I I have I have some you know pros and cons thoughts on all each of them, but I'd like us to consider them each uh, separately and and apart from this budget decision right now. I would agree with that, Mr. President. I would disagree. I think. The impact the ordinance, it's really important for me to especially to dive right into that as a newer commissioner. And I don't think we can wait. Well, then I would suggest we first have a work session on it the week after we deal with the five year integrated work plan. And then we give staff um, a timeline for doing whatever we think at the time might be appropriate and then come back and have a hearing. So I would just uh, point out, we, we got two really good things accomplished by attaching them to res, uh, critical votes last year. One was the evaluation of the um, CIP arterials uh, in the Southwest and the um, uh, 
development uh, performance measures. And it was because the commission uh, attached those as part of the approval and staff moved forward. They took that as the green light. These, I think this, this doesn't say what the new ordinance would be, but it says that we will have a new ordinance and we have to adopt a new ordinance. This doesn't say what the, how the list would look, what's on the list, where they'd rank. It just says we want an integrated list and staff can move forward. Uh, Jason said that last time, Justin said that last time we spoke, you know, it's complicated, but they can do that. Um, it doesn't say how specifically we'd scope in temporary installations, just that they would be part of the, the project. Some, some are, some aren't. It's just an indication of commission uh, intent. Um, and so that's why I think it's critical that we make it part that, of the motion. That's and that's why I appreciated the These topics would move forward for discussion. I don't think we can put a, um, a hard stop on it because we have to see yeah. what everybody comes up with, what the input is. So, you know, we, we're going to have to go through that process, but this certainly would get the ball rolling to have this discussion. So, so your motion incorporates those four items. I had impact fee ordinance, taking a look at the impact fee ordinance, taking a look at that integrated priority list and the temporary. So, okay. so I only had three. I guess I missed the part. Oh, oh the, uh, the, the compensation, the COLA. So, the, and the, the way. I didn't attach that to him. I'm sorry. You had brought it up at a previous meeting. So. Okay. Thank you. And, and the director is dying to Over say to something. <laughs> Uh, Mr. President, Commissioners, I'd like to request a 10-minute recess because the staff has got to do some very quick homework right now to ensure you have the proper numbers to make your resolution. Right now, that's no longer correct uh, based on your decision. So we'd like to take a 10-minute break to come back, give uh, Christine the time to uh, uh, work her magic. And then at the same token, I uh, since the budget has been reduced, our recommendation to you, and we will balance it. Uh, the additional 1.5 million or whatever it is you just removed will come out of priority quarter. Uh, so we'll give you a, a balanced approach to that. But please give us a time, a couple minutes. I think that's to work a good idea. That. And I good find idea. that those resolutions were tied to option four. Mm -hmm. We so are. I, thank you for clarifying. Adjourned that. for 10 minutes. Thank you, sir. I'm just assuming you. you take the 151 and subtract the 1.3, right? And you subtract it from the 46. <laughs>
Yeah, I will. I gotta get some water.
the magic number yet? Uh, Mr. President, commissioners, I believe that uh, again, thank you for the uh, the recess. I believe we're ready to proceed and provide you some more information. Okay. And here comes Christine. Boy, that was quick. And it's even on the presentation. Yeah, I'll try. Uh, Mr. <laughs> President, commissioners, uh, for the record, Christine Tandler. So as you can see on this screen, it is an updated amount showing a proposed budget of $150.6 million and the uh, property tax certification of $45.2 million. That is by taking out the amount that was the 3% for a capital project. Okay. And then if we're not doing, uh, without that 3%, you take out that um, resolution. Remove resolution 2366 right. from your titles at the top of that page. Right. So just we pretend like that's need, not on there. We'll need three separate motions. Three separate motions. Okay. If you are putting in those other things, uh, I would say that they belong in the Okay. Okay. Jim, you want to make the first motion and or, or Mary? Hey, uh, Mary, do you want me to make it or do you want to make it? I'll just read those items. You, Go you ahead, want Mary. To read, your, read your items. Okay. I'll, so, I'll well, make I, them. well, we had the motion on the floor, so am I? It, there was no second, so are we just starting over from beginning? Was there a second? No. Uh, we, not we not yet, because we didn't have a number yet. Okay. Let's start off and state the motion from beginning to end. Okay. Um, uh, Ms. President, I would move to approve the fiscal year 2022 proposed budget of $150,613,900 and authorize the commission president to sign the property tax. Nope, okay. that's nope. second motion. Nope. Okay. So just the budget. Just the budget. <laughs> and uh, option three. And the. Um, and the uh, with the condition with the following four conditions that the impact fee ordinance uh, be reformed uh, over the next year and a new one adopted by June 1st um, that all capital projects uh, in the future be compiled into a single integrated priority list and the priority list will be voted on by the commission as part of the integrated five year work plan commission can make adjustments as necessary in future years and the commission will adopt a process for budgeting and scoping projects in the integrated five-year work plan to use temporary traffic calming features uh, where neighborhoods have expressed concerns of speeding um, and this would be adopted by the first quarter budget adjustment and then the fourth item is uh, in fiscal year 2022 the budget to reflect no increase in compensation for the commissioner director <clears throat> got it all out and did you say option three in your no, that's a separate. That's a separate. That's a okay. separate. So this okay. is the budget. And that's your motion. Do dollar amount. And then the next motion will refer to. Okay, the motion has been made and Scott has written it down meticulously. <laughs> is there a second? I've got it. Second. It's written down too. It's been moved and seconded. Mr. President. Mr. President. Yes. Uh, if I may, um, I, I would be in favor of this motion. Uh, the first part and the very last part. The other items, I think, ought to be uh, separated out from it. So, that, are you going to make a are you going to make a substitute motion then? Well, I would be happy to yes uh, move that we approve. The That's the only way we can amend it. All right, I'm happy to propose a uh, substitute uh, motion that we approve the fiscal year 2022 proposed budget of 150,600. Sorry, one hundred about one hundred and fifty million. Yeah, one hundred fifty million six hundred thirteen thousand <laughs> nine hundred dollars, and that. Um, I'm sorry, you'll have to remind me what the the final item was that Commissioner Hansen added. The compensation for the commission. Oh, right, that the budget not and the director a compensation increase for the uh, ACAC commission and the director. Is there a second? 
the motion dies for lack of a I'm second. Sorry, the audio is cutting out. Oh, there was no second, Dave. So the motion dies for the substitute motion. Okay. All right. So we have before us the original motion, and it has been seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm sorry, the audio. That motion carried. Yes. The audio cut out again. Um, did we have the vote? Yes. Are you aye or nay? Uh, I will. I will vote yay. Thank you. The voting has been unanimous on the first motion. Now we'll entertain a motion for uh, the property tax certification of $45,223,000. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I move that we authorize the commission president to sign the property tax certification at $45,223,000. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, aye. 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 And uh, Dave, are you in favor of the second motion? Uh, yes, I'm in favor of that. Sorry, it, the audio does keep cutting out. Oh, I understand. Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Okay, um, motion number three, which is to approve resolution number 2365. Mr. President, I move to approve resolution 2365. Is there a second? Dave, we've uh, moved and approved uh, uh, resolution number 2365. Now I'm going to ask for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion also carries. Unanimous. That's the end of our budget hearing tonight. Surprise, surprise. This is the first unanimous budget approval I've had in my Nine years on the commission. And I think the second budget you've approved. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a bit of you. And I it's had to only, rub that in, folks. And it's I, only I, 8 o'clock. And I appreciate that, uh, President uh, Goldthorpe, I really appreciate you managing this process. Mm -hmm. And uh, I especially appreciate the resolution you brought forward on the um, uh, community programs and also your commitment to get some great work sessions coming in over the next four weeks on the priorities in the uh, five-year integrated work plan and we have lots of fun work ahead for us and for our constituents. Yes. Now, before we adjourn, there is one last portion of our uh, agenda that we have every single meeting, and that is community or in public communications where anyone from the public or on Zoom can address us uh, regarding basically anything that they like, hopefully that's something that involves ACHD. Is there any one desiring such communication. Then this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.